Hi there, in today's video I'm talking about the idea that you don't need to be on some epic expedition in order to be taking or making great photographs. That making great photographs can be an, can be an organic and unstructured thing that you incorporate into your everyday life, which doesn't mean that you come away with snapshots, it means you come away with photographs made with intention, but you've just incorporated this into whatever it is you're doing from one day to the next. I like to incorporate making good photographs as part and parcel of my everyday life rather than it being the guiding force that determines what I do and where I go. Just because photography happens organically doesn't mean that it can't be a good photograph, doesn't mean that it has to be a snapshot. You can still make photographs with intention even if you're doing them on the fly. There is the old adage that the best camera is the one you have with you but what I'm talking about today is I think you still need to have a decent camera with you it does help to have a few good lenses for the photographs that you usually take with you as well obviously the more gear that you have the more potential circumstances you can deal with making photographs organically doesn't just mean you're making photographs with your phone all the time because that's the only thing you have with you it just means using the light and the circumstances to hand in order to create the best photograph that you could be making at the time I really honestly think that this is the way that most of us make photographs almost all the time is almost accidentally we make photographs because we're there at the right time with the right equipment. So the context I'm going to talk about is my partner Ma surprised me with a, with a night down in Botany Bay on the Kent coast here in England and our son was at camp so we had a precious night to ourselves and we had nothing better to do than to just walk along the beach and eat dinner and you know do nothing much really it's in this context that i had my camera and i made a few photos i've said before that i often make do with imperfect lighting because if that's what i've got to work with then getting some photographs with the lighting you've got is better than getting no photographs at all and trying to wait for the perfect light in this case there were some overcast and dull moments when the sky was quite a bit lighter than the ground in these circumstances I always expose for the sky and underexpose the earth. It's much easier to bring detail out of the shadows than it is to recover it from the highlights. In these fairly uneventful images of a castle on the hill with the beach foreground, the impact really comes from bringing out the details in post-processing and, in this case, converting to black and white. This highlights graphical elements that can get lost with more dull lighting in colour. I was lucky though that the sun came out as it was setting making for some ideal lighting for some portraits and some landscapes. My go-to lens for making portraits is 35mm. This is wider than conventional photographic wisdom but I like to show the context of the subject. It also means I'm close by my subject and can communicate and interact more naturally. My partner Ma obliged with some poses. Clearly, having a partner who doesn't mind being photographed helps with this type of situational or opportunistic photography. And let's face it, our closest subject is our family who we're the most invested in. So why shouldn't it be a topic or a subject for our own photography? I'm always on the lookout for clean backdrops that I can use for making portraits. The seawall coated in seaweed at low tide offered a beautiful textured and dark background to Ma as I took some photos of her. I still had on the 35mm on which I used with the wide open aperture. I asked Ma to step away from the wall to accentuate the difference between her as the subject fully in focus and the dark out of focus background. I think it's important to always be on the lookout for clean backgrounds that you can use for portraits and not to make too much of a fuss when you're creating those portraits with your subject. Do it quickly, cleanly and come away with some great shots. In this instance I moved around a little with portrait and landscape orientation. I usually prefer a landscape orientation for portraits which kind of makes me wonder who it was that came up with the name portrait for portrait but anyway I digress. 
Later in Lightroom, part of my editing process is often to change a more formal portrait from the 3x2 of full frame to a 4x3 crop. This slightly less elongated crop is more visually appealing for a portrait than the full frame crop. This might be because it more closely mirrors the medium format film portraits I used to make before I switched to digital. By the time we'd finished our evening walk, the wind had picked up, created a more dynamic situation. Also, the sun was much lower on the horizon, so you get that really beautiful evening sunset light. Again, I used a shallow depth of field, isolating elements of the scene, such as Mars blowing hair, or the phone she was taking photographs with, helping to create a contemplative and dreamy narrative. You might notice in these images I retain the full frame 3x2 format rather than crop it to the 4x3 I just mentioned as I often do for the more formal portraits. A documentary aesthetic I think is more suited to the 3x2 rather than the 4x3 but it's certainly not a rule that I live with or anyone should live with as far as I'm concerned. While I'm on the subject of format I also on my personal tendency is to crop to 16 by 9 for a landscape which is what I did here. This one of the sea and castle that I took on the walk back to the hotel cropped to 16 by 9. I don't pretend this is an amazing landscape image but the point of this video is how I try to elevate the photographs I make while engaged in other everyday activities. If you're interested in what formats to use, in what context and how that might affect the aesthetic, please leave a comment. We can have a discussion about it. That's about it. That was a single walk along the coast on a single evening. The following day we took another walk. I took some more photos but the light wasn't as good and I wasn't as happy with the photos I took the next day. There were more snapshots. I think the point is I go out prepared to make merit worthy photographs whenever I am going out with a camera and when you go out with that intention I think that really helps to elevate your images particularly when you invest a little bit of time knowing what's going to work in what context with the lenses the light the backgrounds and all those sorts of things that's been another little insight into my process I hope you found it useful I really enjoy making these videos because they prove to me why I take photos what it is that I've find enjoyable about them. If you're interested in photography, particularly underwater photography, photography at the beach, making portraits, that's the kind of stuff that I do. So give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Just before I go, I thought I'd say if there's anything that you think I should be making videos on, if you've seen my Instagram and you know what kind of photographs I take, if, you're, if there's anything in that that you think I'd really like to know how he does that or his thought process or what kind of artistic influences he might have, please hit me in the comments. I'd really like to know what it is that people are interested in. So do that and I'll see you soon. Bye.